Hey, it's Vass here from Aussie RC Playground and welcome to another unboxing. Today, we're gonna to be looking at this guy. This is the Team Magic Seth. So the Seth is a 1.8 scale four wheel drive brushless desert buggy, but it's bigger than a 1.8 scale. And the reason for that is because it's actually based on a truggy chassis. So it's a lot longer than your typical 1.8 scale buggy. Um, however, they haven't really put truggy arms on it. So it's not quite as wide as a truggy, but then it is wider than your typical buggy. So it kind of sits somewhere in between. Um, you could probably pass it off as a 1 7 scale, I suppose, um, because it is uh, quite a bit bigger than your typical 1 8 scale buggy. Now, all that being said, uh, it does look very, very cool. It has a four millimeter chassis, which is absolutely stunning. I'll be showing you that very, very soon. Uh, also comes with the uh, electrics capable of running up to 6S. It's all waterproof. It's available in the green and it's also available in the red. So here is the buggy uh, that I got. And uh, I actually got the green version as well, which I'll show you in a second, which is kind of cool. So uh, the instruction manual and this uh, little bag of goodies, they only give you the keys uh, like a wrench, I suppose, to kind of do the, um, or undo the 70 millimeter hex nuts that are on the wheels. Uh, there are no other tools included, uh, no other accessories, no other plastic bits and pieces. Uh, it's just a manual with some uh, advertising stuff on the back and uh, the 17 millimeter wrench, that's about it. Now, the radio for this guy is the same radio that I've uh, sort of used in a lot of the other Team Magic cars. Uh, these are actually really good radios. They run on four AA's. Uh, they've got no collapsible antennas. They have a little rubber wheel, which isn't bad, but of course, if you're using this and your fingers get a little bit sweaty, like if you're running this in summer, it can slip. Uh, so just be mindful. But of course, being rubber, it's a lot more durable than foam. Um, you got your reverse switches. Uh, you have steering trim, throttle trim. And when you push the little center button in this cross section, those buttons become um, endpoint adjustments. So you can actually adjust the top speed of this. You can also, uh, you know, uh, adjust the endpoints of your steering so you don't strain out your servo and, and blow that out. Uh, really cool uh, remote. And it also beeps at you if you leave it on for too long, uh, which has happened to me more than once, believe it or not. So uh, on with the car and here it is in all its glory. You can see a perfect side profile there. I'll give you the old spin around. So you've got the front end shot of it there. Another side view. Here's the back end. And of course, that stunning chassis underneath, which I'll be giving you some close-ups of as well. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this as we go along. So taking the body off, there are only three body pins that hold this guy in place. There's one at the front, two in the back, and you can slide this out. Now you do need to be careful if you've got this plugged in, there is a wire that goes out to the LED lights um, here on top. They are reasonably well protected. Uh, there's no metal here or anything like that, but it does have this kind of plastic cage on top. So it will take a little bit of a hit. You kind of have to uh, use this buggy in the way that it's meant to be used. I mean, this is a desert buggy, so it's really designed to go on sand dunes and things like that. Of course, you can jump it. Um, just like you can any other truggy or buggy, but you kind of need to be a little bit careful here. Um, given the design of the body and what it's intended for, if you go and, you know, go all out and try to do backflips with it or something like that, and you land on here, well, obviously that's going to create some damage. So try to use it within its means and for what its application is for. Um, now, the Lexan that they've used on this, uh, just quickly talking about this a little bit, is actually quite thick. I'm, I'm really, really impressed uh, with the uh, Lexan that they've used here. And uh, I suppose this is a really big positive because when I had, well, actually, I still have my Thunder Tiger Bushmaster, the Lexan they used on that was actually quite thin. And what that means is, as you use the car and it takes a few hits here and there, the screws that are holding the panels in place, they actually go through the Lexan. So this being a little bit thicker than normal, uh, the screws hopefully will hold on and uh, I won't wreck the Lexan as I did with the Bushmaster. Now there is one point of concern with this particular body um, and that's involving you know, the entire cage and everything. And that's really how this wing, this rear wing is actually mounted on to the back here. Now it's a little bit hard to kind of showcase on camera um, and you might think, oh, okay, what's wrong with the wing? Well, the problem is that it's kind of just sitting like on top of two very small points. So if you can imagine 
like that's what the wing is sitting on. Uh, there's really no um, sort of vertical or horizontal support. It should really be mounted on like some kind of strengthening plate. Um, uh, something that has, I don't know, a little bit more substantial, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Where you would normally see like on monster trucks and things like that, there's usually a mounting plate that the wing sits on, even though you may only have one screw or, or two screws holding it in place. Um, there is a plate, there is a brace underneath it to stop the wing from kind of ripping off. Um, and this is one area of concern for me. I think that, you know, one or two hits in on this wing and uh, it'll pretty much just break clean out of here. That's my guesstimate, <laughs> okay? Uh, I don't know if that's entirely going to be the case. It may flex and it may hold on just fine over time, uh, but the way that it's mounted on just, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of an area of concern. Um, other than that, uh, the cage looks very sturdy. Uh, there's, it actually doesn't weigh all that much despite it having all this extra plastic on here uh, and having the base, you know, with the little cockpit in here and everything. Uh, that's really not that heavy, uh, surprisingly. So hopefully it'll hold on um, and I won't, uh, yeah, I won't need to get myself another one. So we'll see how that goes. So the, uh, the car underneath the hood, this is what it looks like. Uh, there it is there. So uh, we have... Well, actually, before we get stuck into everything, um, let's work from the outside in as we normally do. So we'll start with the tires. Um, so the tires on this actually feel pretty good. They don't feel uh, super hard. I like the rubber compound. I'm not 100% sure on the tread. I think the tread's a little bit flat. Um, so we'll see. Maybe they might uh, work okay. I don't see them working too well on my gravel area. Um, maybe they're more designed for sandy surfaces. I don't know. Um, but where I run my RCs, I, I don't know if this is actually going to hold up. I could be wrong. Um, I haven't tried this sort of tire before, so we'll see. Um, now, an interesting thing about these tires in these wheels is that the wheel is a kind of like a short course wheel. So it looks like a 2.2 on the outside, three inch on the inside with a 17 millimeter hex. That's not totally unusual. There's been plenty of companies that have done that in the past. What's unusual though, is the size of the tires. They actually have a very high wall. So the tire die, the overall diameter is quite big compared to your standard uh, short course tire. Um, and of course, if you compare this to a truggy tire, it's a little bit smaller than that. It's also bigger than a buggy tire. So if you are thinking about swapping these out and putting something else on here, you have to do a little bit of a compromise as to how it's going to look with the car. If you go buggy, it's going to look a little bit small. If you go monster truck, it might be a bit too oversized and you might end up hitting the panels every time you turn the wheels. So that could be a bit of a problem. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit unique, a uh, little bit proprietary, but hopefully the tires are okay to the point where I don't really need to swap them out. So we'll see how we go. Um, shocks, suspension, uh, actually pretty good. Probably... No, actually, I was going to say it's probably slightly undersprung, but it's not. See, this is very interesting. I, I, you know, they didn't supply any preload spaces or anything like that. The shocks are not threaded, so you do need preload spaces in here, and they haven't provided any, so you can't really tune the shocks. So that's a little bit of a letdown, I think. I think Team Magic could have done a bit better there um, and supplied us with some, just, you know, a little baggie with some preload uh, spaces. That would have been nice. Uh, it is nice to see, obviously, the, uh, the little color matching, um, I guess you'd call these, what are these, spring socks or something they're called. Um, so yeah, it's nice to see that, nice little touch. I don't, I don't know of too many ready to run cars that come with this type of feature on here. Uh, that being said, the shock caps and the shock bodies themselves are all plastic. Uh, I'll just confirm that. Yes, they are all plastic. Um, so we'll see how they hold up. I have had plenty of Team Magic cars in the past, a lot of which have come with plastic shocks and I haven't had any problems. Um, so, you know, there's, I think this is misconception of, um, you know, as soon as people see plastic shocks, oh, it's automatically crap, it should be aluminium. Not always the case. Plastic shocks can actually work quite well um, if they're done right. And um, I think, you know, given the experience that I've had with some of these Team Magic cars, uh, that's pretty much been proven. Uh, bumpers, front and rear bumpers actually feel pretty solid. Uh, you know, they do have a little bit of give, especially the front one. Probably would have preferred the front one to stick out just a little bit more, but, uh, but not too bad. I think it's fine. It seems to be braced pretty well. Um, 
The shock towers, front and rear, look to be about four millimeter aluminium or five millimeter aluminium. So they look to be, they're just stamped. Um, they're not machined or anything, but they, you know, hopefully they'll hold up okay. Especially once you have the roll cage in there. So you have the body, which also adds a little bit of strength. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will uh, hold up pretty well. You do have a little bit of aluminium on the front here, just on top of the steering assembly, uh, which then moves on to the receiver box, which is right on top of the car here. You have a waterproof Savox uh, steering servo, which is a 0231 metal geared servo. Um, for an ESC, we have a rebranded quick run hobby wing ESC, which is 150 amps, capable of running up to 6S. And then, oops, almost dropped it. Um, and then the motor is a 2200 KV 4074 Leopard Hobby by Thor. So I think Leopard Hobby made it or Thor branded it. I'm not sure. Um, but that, you know, I've had Leopard Hobby motors before. Uh, they seem to be very powerful, very good. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that this guy will have plenty of power. And in fact, on the side of the box, it says that the car is capable of 90 kilometers an hour, which is pretty good speed for something this big and this size um, and for what its application is for. I think that's very respectable speed. Uh, I have no doubt that this car will be able to hit that. Whether it needs extra gearing or not, I don't know, but um, I'll probably find that out soon enough. On the opposite side of the motor, we have a padded. So it's actually got a little bit of foam on the base of the battery tray. Uh, so it has the battery tray there with three Velcro straps, nice and easy for you to put a variety of different types of batteries in here um, and the straps just hold it in place so you're not kind of limited to a particular size in height. That being said, it is a bit of a tight squeeze in the length. There's plenty of width and I may actually measure it and put it up on screen so you guys can actually see the full size of the battery tray. Um, now that's width and length and width, obviously height is variable. Um, but I would have liked to have seen slightly longer. Um, that's probably the only thing because I've got a number of 3S batteries here that I could have easy, easily have used in this car, but they don't fit in the tray lengthwise. They'll fit widthwise, but not lengthwise. Um, so yeah, another 10 millimeters or so would have been perfect, uh, just in the length. That's really my only criticism there. Moving on through the back, uh, well actually before we get there, uh, there is a center diff obviously on here. The motor mount is not a sliding motor mount, so it's the old style that you have to kind of get your uh, Allen keys in here to slide the motor, you know, undo two screws and slide the motor uh, in and out. So you, need, you do need to keep that in mind. Uh, oil fill diff in the center. I do like the wire management that they've done here, very, very nice. Uh, only criticism I have um, regarding all of this are these T-Style or Dean's connectors. I really wish that Team Magic would uh, move away from these and maybe start including different types like an EC5 or an XT90. Um, Horizon Hobby have been using EC5s on some of their bigger vehicles for a, uh, a long time now. Uh, Armour also did it uh, a few years ago with the XT90s which are now moving into IC5 connectors. I think it's time to see other companies do this as well. Uh, and move away from these Deans. These Deans, they're just not designed to handle 6S power. They will get too hot um, and they, uh, they create too much resistance, meaning that you're going to draw extra amps and make the system a little bit more inefficient, raise temperatures, all of these sort of things. Come on, Team Magic. I know you can do it. <laughs> Let's see some better connectors on these cars, uh, especially for your 6S capable machines. Um, I think it's only fair. So uh, moving on to the back, we have a, uh, I think it looks like a five or six millimeter aluminum chassis brace in the rear. So that's really nice and strong, really nice touch there, I like that. Uh, and then of course we move on to what looks to be uh, the rear body mounts. We have nice big long shocks in the rear. This does come with uh, sway bars installed front and rear. Uh, we have also CVDs all the way around which is really nice. Some aluminum steering knuckles on the front here, which lead on to some uh, rather long extenders. Uh, so I don't think they've actually used very long arms here. They've actually extended it out uh, via the hex adapters for the wheels. So interesting way of doing that. Uh, hopefully it will hold on okay. Uh, notice as well that the front and rear arms have actually got four adjustment points on the uh, where the shocks mount on the arms. So that's a really unique sort of look. I've not seen any RCs that I've owned in the past to have this many adjustments on the arms. Um, you won't be able to adjust too much on the shock tower in the front 
or the rear, although there are a couple of option positions there, but the rest of the plastic and the mount and everything kind of get in the way. So you can't really adjust, uh, unless you start sort of hacking at some of the plastic, you won't be able to adjust anything on the shock towers. Most of your adjustments are gonna be done on the arms. Uh, but then you do have a bunch of adjustments on the upper arms and on the um, uh, hub uh, carriers, I think they're called, uh, on the front and rear. There are multiple adjustments for you to sort of play around with and change the way that the thing handles if you uh, want to do that. Um, so the aluminium chassis, as I said, four millimeters, very nicely finished. Everything's countersunk. The edges are also chamfered very nicely. So there's no sharp edges on this. I mean, it looks absolutely amazing. I will give you guys some close-ups. Uh, there are droop screws pre-installed on the arms um, straight out of the box. And you'll notice where the droop screws are, they've actually tapered the chassis. And uh, there's actually like some... I don't know what you'd call it, like a, a grip surface on the actual chassis itself so that the droop screws don't slip uh, or move around too much. Uh, just nice little touches there. I really like that. I think uh, Team Magic did a very good job with that one. Uh, so other than that, I think I've covered pretty much everything on this guy. My personal opinion of it, um, I love the fact that this actually exists. Uh, I think it's brilliant. Um, I like to see things a little bit left of center. Uh, I mean, I think Team Magic, they already have a 1.8 scale buggy. Uh, they could have easily have gone and uh, probably adapted that platform into something like another Bushmaster. But I like the fact that they've come up with this. This is, I think this is fairly new to them. Um, I don't see this platform in anything else in their lineup. Um, so it's not like they've converted a different type of car into this. So this looks as though it's a brand new platform. I'm very, very excited about it and I hope to do more with it. Um, now, if you, in case you're wondering if you wanna see what the green one looks like, well, here it is here. Um, that's what the green body looks like. So uh, they also sent me out that, and uh, believe it or not, they also sent me out some matching um, shock socks <laughs> so that when I do change it out, of course, um, I can uh, have the matching socks to go with it. Uh, but there we have it. That is the Team Magic Seth buggy. Um, one eight scale, but quite a large one eight scale. Uh, hopefully I've uh, shown you some uh, comparisons, side by side shots between this and some of the other buggies that I own, uh, some of the other trucks that I own to give you a sense of scale of just how much bigger this buggy actually is because it kind of, well, it's based on a one, one eight scale truggy, essentially that's what it is. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully you got enough information out of this one. If you have any questions, feel free to check out the video description. I'll have a link in there to the Team Magic uh, website where this will be featured and that'll have all the information you need for it there. Or you can also post a question out on the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, also, while you're in the video description, check out the links to my social media pages, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, Patreon, if you wanna jump on board and help out the channel. That is it for me. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll be speaking to you next time.